Hey guys, I thought I'd do a mini review of these oil pastels that I got given at Christmas. I've never actually used oil pastels before, I've used uh, soft chalk pastels, but never really oil ones. I did have a set um, that came in kind of like a kid's artist box set when I was kind of a kid, but I don't know if they were kind of like really cheap ones or proper oil ones or what, because I never really liked them that much, so who knows, but we'll find out when I open these if they're any good. I did look up and found that these are about £3 on Amazon at the moment, so if you want to buy yourself a set of 12, £3 on Amazon, which is quite a good buy. So anyway, I'm going to open these up so you can see what colours you get. And it said, um, when I looked up kind of what you should use for oil pastels, it said um, you're better off with really thick textured textured paper and I don't think I've actually got any thick textured paper so I'm going to just try them out on the printed paper and we'll see how we go with that so oh they're really thin I don't know why I thought they'd be like really thick chunky ones so what do we get we've got a white a yellow a pink uh looks like kind of an orange brown red two blues two greens a black and a gray so haha nervous I thought I'd test them out I also brought in my um like turpentine stuff um it says it's linseed oil but i'm pretty sure they said it works as turpentine for oil paint so we shall see um cause it says for oil color at the bottom and i've had this since oh god so long since about 2008 i think when i was at college i know earlier than that probably 2006 2007 because they made you use oil paints at college and i hated oil paint so much so i've got this whole whole tub of this stuff and some q-tips so i'm wondering if perhaps it will make the oil pastels blend together maybe we shall find out Let's get this little bit of test paper here and test out some of the colors before i actually draw anything on it also said on the internet that um the more you layer down the more you can blend the colors which is why the thick paper is recommended so i don't know I'm sort of, I kind of don't want to press too hard because it will like destroy the, they're so soft that they're actually going to like get destroyed really quickly, I think, if I did that. And there'll be like no pastels left. Um, so far, they feel really kind of, I guess, creamy. Sort of, oh, I don't know, I'm struggling to find words to kind of describe. Oh, that's that's less creamy. That's a bit more solid, but they are very, very soft. Not as soft as chalk pastels, if you use chalk pastels, but still pretty soft. Blend together. Okay, that didn't work. That just got that all gross. Um, yeah, okay, so that's what happens if I lay down a huge blob of colour and then I'll put like the turpentine stuff over it and see if that like blends it together nicely. It also said on the internet, use your fingers <laughs> and get gross. So let's see. Really? Okay, mainly that just gets you gross. <laughs> Let's see if the turpentine works better. Um, or the linseed oil, as it says in the pot. Okay. It's, I think they blend better just by going over them than they do by shoving your finger over them. Uh, but let's see what happens. All right, this is where I fail at getting the safety lid off. <laughs> okay. I found like a whole box of like art supplies um, from my college days. I have like a whole box of stuff and it had all sorts of like glass paints and um, the kind of paint you have to use with egg eggs in there as well. It was like, it's such a blast from the past, kind of like going through my old college art stuff. And I found all my oil, oil paints in there as well, which, yeah, I had to throw a whole lot of my oil paints out a while ago. Ooh, okay. Maybe I think I might have put too much oil on there, but that blends a hell of a lot better than using your finger, for sure. Whee! I turned you into watercolour, almost. Although you can still see where the giant dark patch was. I think maybe I put too much, like, um, too much goo on it. What happens if I move over here? Because there's less goo on my stick now. My Q-tip thing. Mainly I think that just lifts the colour more than blending it. I don't know. And now my thing's all gross. But 
let's try it on the bit that I blended with my finger and see what happens. I have a feeling you'd end up getting through an awful lot of these uh, of these Q-tip things using it. That I think that's better. So I think if you blend it with your finger and then put the linseed oil over the top, it looks nicer. It kind of looks. It's probably not showing up, but it looks like really shiny. If I can position got this really shiny gleam texture to the top of it which will probably dry out but it's it looks quite nice the way that's uh the way that's gone okay what's next oh i wanted to try um see what it's like blending it with just like a piece of tissue and then we'll get into trying to actually create something which will be scary so i don't know why my default is just to go to the blues <laughs> maybe i'll go to the Red, but it says like build up lots and lots and lots of layers on the internet. And I'm kind of not sure how you do that because it kind of the more you put down, the more it turns into a bit of a blob. I remember this is my first time ever kind of trying out oil pastels, so I have absolutely no no idea what I'm doing. I'm learning as I go. That's kind of my philosophy with like all art. I think it's best to kind of learn by just practicing it on a picture rather than spending time kind of agonizing over it and looking up tutorials and I'm not a big fan of tutorials I kind of like to figure stuff out for myself as I go okay it really doesn't work with using a bit of tissue it's better with like the warmth from your fingers or maybe that's just because the colors just don't blend at all but anyway okay I think we've got an interesting test going on I might use some of this on like the final picture once I'm done just to try and smooth the edges out a bit because it makes it look much more like a kind of a watercolour paint. If I can get the stupid safety lid back on, I swear I hate these safety lids for children because they stump adults as well. Okay, here we go. I think I will do a fast forwardy thing, speed paint and you can see there's a close up of it. Yeah. Okay, here we go. I have no idea what I'm going to create. Whee! Okay guys, get your popcorn ready and get comfortable and watch the complete and utter disaster commence. Um, yeah, this, don't worry, you only have to sit through the speed paint for a minute. It was the fastest I could, uh, I could speed it up. It was like times 64 something. Um, so anyway, I did my OC Foon sitting on mushrooms and yeah, this, this picture, it didn't turn out well. Uh, I'm not entirely impressed with it, uh, but I'll give you all my thoughts once uh, once you get through the gruelling speed paint of this disaster and you can watch the mistakes unfold. It kind of, it wasn't a complete disaster until I tried to put that background in because I sort of fell into the old kind of mindset of using chalk pastels and then just you know get a nice chalk pastel background you just smudge it all together that didn't work on this picture so it ended up looking like a streaky mess so hide it with trees um but anyway i'll give you my thoughts properly in a minute since the speed paint's over woohoo you only had to sit through it for a minute and we're back so this picture i i struggled with it you can't get fine details with with oil pastels at all even using like the the rim of the pastel where it's nice and kind of sharp um i couldn't get a good outline on the character or like the mushrooms um this was sort of the experimental test mushroom and then this one i kind of i preferred the way this one came out i thought it looked kind of glossy until i am added um, more white to it because i thought oh white highlights would be a good idea and i think that actually took away from the gloss um it doesn't look that grey and glossy now it looks more kind of white and washed out and then this one I tried to do you know what the internet said of um, you know press really hard layer up the colours and to be honest it just kind of it maybe looks more vibrant but it, it also looks kind of like a goopy mess um, and I mentioned in the speed paint that I was struggling with the background in the end I sort of kind of made it mountains where it was all streaky where the colours didn't blend um, and then of course I added the trees over the top and I also went back in afterwards with uh, my Prismacolor pencils just to kind of outline the fairy and to add in like these little kind of extra foliage stuff um, 
because it just looked like there was such a big empty space there. And I ended up using like so much of this. My my Q-tip thing was actually kind of disintegrating, like all the the kind of the paddy bit kind of came off the stick and I was kind of ended up scraping the stick along the paper by accident. Um, so anyway, yeah, this, I would not have, I don't think I'd ever use oil pastels if I didn't have um, some of this oil. It was really gross by the end. My fingers were just like oil, gross, slime city. <laughs> it was really nasty. Um, but yeah, I don't know. How is this different from the linseed oil that you can buy from the supermarket off the shelf? Um, except for the fact that it's a lot more expensive it's sort of that's odd why because I, I swear it's just like cooking oil um, it says uses to create transparency and gloss by increasing oil content of colors add only sufficient oil to give the desired consistency and degree of gloss so yeah <laughs> it, well, it still works and it was still good for moving the color around it actually really helped having because um, this page got really completely soaked in oil, I don't know. You can kind of see where it came through on the back, the oil. Um, but it actually helped going over that then with the pastels. The pastels really glided onto the surface of the paper once you already had an oil base on it. So, yeah, I definitely would recommend if you're trying out oil pastels to get some turpentine or linseed oil just to give it a give it a go this one was made by De La Rau Rauni I always pronounce that wrong um but yeah I've had this one for ages so yeah those were kind of just my thoughts it's can't say it's a medium I'll probably use use again very often I did kind of like the way the white in her wings kind of blended out in the end um but I didn't put any of her wing pattern in just because I was like I'm gonna end up messing it up <laughs> Um, so anyway, that was my first attempt at a picture with oil colours. Yay! Oil pastels. My knife box is now, I don't know if show up, it's all oily and gross. <laughs> my nice clean box. So yeah, uh, £3 off Amazon if you want to get some to test out for yourself. Um, there's my picture of Foon. <laughs> um, yeah, so now I can give you a tiny bit of updates of what I've been doing for my story. Because I've been kind of working on it a little bit. I started work on the first page of chapter five of my story and I did this one on A4 because usually for my, my illustrated story I've been doing them on, on A5 pa pages, so like that. But this one I knew there was just so much detail I needed to put into it in the background that there was no way I was going to squish that on to an A5 piece of paper. So I just thought I'd show you kind of some of the details since it kind of took so long to do. It's like this broken tree up here and stinkhorn mushrooms uh, yeah you might think they kind of look a bit inappropriate but if you've ever looked up a picture of a stinkhorn mushroom it's impossible to draw them and have them look decent let's just say that um but they also come in all sorts of different kind of types so you get these like weird ones with holes in as well which are part of the stinkhorn family and then these ones that have got like this almost like a dress around them which is semi-transparent and it's got holes in it um, and then you get these weird ones over here that look a bit like I don't know something you'd find underwater and like a starfish and stuff but they're all part of the stinkhorn family and this is phallus um, and yeah it was hard to draw the little faces even on an A4 piece of paper they were so so tiny um, and then shiitake and lentinus idodes are standing here with this mushroom uh, mushroom log because these are shiitake mushrooms and then you get little packs trying to grow her little mushroom and then of course this log fallen down tree thing over there and the trees in the background so yeah I was kind of proud of my and there's this broken tree down here I don't know I was just sort of proud of the details that I put into this picture which of course now means I need to like recreate every single part of this for like each page of the story which I think is good because in my previous chapter it kind of felt like there was an awful lot of empty space because it was like a clearing so there wasn't much to put in whereas this one's got all sorts of grass and everything and I started working on on the next page as well so this is like um again another A4 one and Shiitake is trying to encourage Pax who's struggling to grow her little mushroom um and then it's just going to be a matter of 
got to put this log in, which this log is that log, and then these things need to go up there, and then of course there's Phallus sitting on his stinkhorn mushroom, which is there. So yeah, it's kind of fun um, having just an environment that you've created yourself. It's sort of I don't know. I enjoy it. It's nice. It's cool. It's like a little world. <laughs> um, so yeah, anyway, that's pretty much what I've been doing with my story. Oh, I also created more of the tree elfin. So they're like the my tree fairies. Um, they didn't have designs before and I've been working on their designs. Haha, here are their designs. So I've got um, Aspen. As you can see, they're really tall, like the tree elfin, they're way taller than mushroom fairy. So this is grown up button down here. Um, and over there, that's Dap. So you can just see like the massive difference in height between the the tree elfin and the, uh, the mushroom fairies, because <laughs> they also have these like dragonfly wings as well. So yeah, this is, this is Aspen. They're all named after certain kinds of trees. Um, and this was gonna be Rowan, but I kind of, I don't feel his hair his hair kind of fits the personality of his character. They're kind of like guards. They're very regimented, the tree elfin, and they take their growing very seriously. That's why their trees are like the tallest of any forest. They're huge. It's just a gigantic tree everywhere thing. Um, anyway, so I thought maybe this hairstyle would be a bit better for him, but I'm not really keen on that either. So it's sort of like he'll need to be redesigned a bit because I'm just not happy with him <laughs> um because uh dap in the story dap and chanterelle get uh arrested for being mushroom fairies because they have a grudge against mushroom fairies because the evil mushroom fairy birch polypore has been like invading their forest and destroying all of their birch trees so this is silver she's responsible for silver birch trees um and of course in nature birch polypore the fungus it's notorious for being kind of a parasite and attacking birch trees and killing them so that's why like she's in danger and like the other types of birch trees have already been eliminated in the forest um and of course if their trees die then the tree elfin die as well if if someone like cuts down their tree or something and there's no trees left that is their like speciality then then they die <laughs> so yeah she's quite beaten up she's got like cracks in her armor um and there's like a little scar up here on her chest and she's sort of losing her confidence and she's getting quite shy and she's sort of becoming like the the Pax of the tree elfin, like my OC Pax who's really shy. Um just because she's taking so many beatings and she's struggling to keep her trees alive. So yeah, that's Silver and Rowan and uh Aspen. I've also been kind of working as well a bit on my flower genies as well and how they would fit in the story. And I decided that they kind of erupt out of like the the pollen of flowers and they're like really tiny like compared to a mushroom fairy they're like this big and the evil birch polypore is going to be capturing them and putting them inside bottles because uh when he gets wounded and injured he's going to shake the bottle and then drink the flower genie because it will restore his health so he's going to be murdering flower genies and they're so cute they're like really tiny little fairy things that they don't have legs they're gonna have like those genie tails that come out of flowers anyway so that's my kind of my ideas my thoughts that I've been doing along with the the new page for my my story and then this giant page for the start of chapter five so yay that's what I've been doing that's my update thank you so much for watching I hope you enjoyed this sort of review slash me failing at oils <laughs> uh oil pastel thing video whatever this intro is getting too intro i meant outro this outro is getting too long um but yeah bye thanks for watching